Okay, I thought I would do a video on wood bucks because there's a lot of people still using them and there's good ways to do it and not so good ways to do it. So before I get into how to do a wood buck, let's, let's just talk why we use insulated concrete forms. We don't use them because they're cheap. We use them to save money and energy and give ourselves a very comfortable structure to live in and a structure that's gonna be high performance and last for generations. That's why we use insulated concrete forms. Now for 30 years, we've been doing this and now I'm watching people build with ICS because well, maybe they're a bit cheaper. That's not really the intent. Like that's great if they are cheaper, but the intent is we wanna give you a really good structure. And so you have to think with that mindset to give yourself a good window buck. So a lot of people are just using dimensional lumber. We started the whole industry using dimensional lumber because that's all we had. Now this happens to be spruce, pine, fir, I don't know, this is spruce actually, but they stamp it as SPL or SPF. And this is just raw lumber. It's not treated. Now really, when you put lumber up against concrete, it should be treated. In a lot of areas, the code mandates that. In your area, it might not. So you have to know your area. Every area is different. And when you start putting stuff down in the chat that you don't have to, well, look over the fence and see the next code body and then you realize that, well, maybe in your area, you're fortunate. In other areas, you're not. So that is the way it works using dimensional lumber what happens, you put this up, you got your ICF up against, you pour concrete into it, the concrete comes up against the wood, the wood swells because it's absorbing that moisture out of the concrete. Then it shrinks back and the concrete as it cures will have that slight shrinkage. You get a really nice gap all the way through that. And when you start doing a blower door test, which in some code bodies is mandatory now, and as the energy codes ramp up, it may become mandatory in your area as well. You fail because you've got infiltration and exfiltration going on nonstop. The, the wall is breathing through this gap and we gotta fix that somehow. So there are some solutions. One very simple solution is just using a sill gasket. Now you could use a peel and stick membrane as well, but you put that on there. Now, how are you gonna hold that there? Well. I like to take a piece of treated plywood. I just take half inch plywood and I cut strips and I put this strip dead center, take a few screws and I screw that on really good. And that seals it up really good. So go with a, a pattern like eight inch on center back and forth. And that's gonna give you this half inch piece of plywood in here. So now you've got your block coming up against, you pour concrete, the concrete goes around that plywood. There's sill gasket there, so the moisture is not getting into this two by 10. And you're not getting that infiltration, exfiltration, because it'd have to go all the way around this to get through. And the sill gasket's gonna help. I also put spray foam between, that helps a bit as well. So that's an option using dimensional lumber. I don't like doing that. I like using plywood. Now, with plywood, you should be using pressure treated plywood. Here I have a piece of spruce. This is just half inch plywood. I have pressure treated as well, but I had to, uh, I'll have to ask for mercy later because of the cost of it nowadays. But put a sill gasket up against that. And then take a two by six and you'll see, I think right there I'm gonna put a video and you're gonna see me take my circular saw and I adjust it to 15, 25 degrees, something like that. It doesn't really have to be much of an angle, but there it is. I rip cut it, flip that around and you can see that angle that I'm gonna get. I put that on here. Actually, I'm gonna flip that over like this. And then again, I'm just taking inch and a half deck screws Exterior, screw that on, get that sill gasket going really good. And again, you're gonna put screws probably eight, eight inches on center. 
And the reason I'm putting sill gasket here is because I'm using spruce plywood and that's gonna rot. I don't want that. I want this thing to last. So you would finish screwing that up and you would end up with this. And that's gonna allow the block come up against, you place concrete, the concrete comes against this sill gasket, seals it from the plywood and it locks in. So it's gonna actually give you the anchor that you need. So that's another way to do it, works really well. Now I'm gonna take another one, another example. Again, take a two by six or a two by eight, could be depending on what size block you're using, rip cut it at that 15, 25 degree, 30 degree, whatever you wanna cut it at. Not that big a deal. Put this down. Get your piece of plywood. And now here I've got treated plywood. I felt rich that day. Put that on. Inch and a half screws. And actually, I don't have a sill gasket on this one because I'm using treated plywood, so I don't really care. Still gonna get that swelling though. I've got a solution for that. First off, I like to use spray foam. Now, there's so many different brands of spray foam and they're all good. Well, I'm wrong. They're not all good. Some of them are latex based and I've watched guys use them. And it's really funny because as soon as you place concrete, it all just oozes out because it's water-based. It just doesn't work. You need the, whatever this is, polyurethane based or, I forget what this is, but whatever it is, it's good. This is great stuff, it's just one brand. I always use this, you'll see in every video I use the red can. And the reason I do that is because people all over North America are watching me do this. This is available everywhere. You could get this at the drugstore with your lottery ticket, it's everywhere. Other brands that you think are better than this, you should use them, that's great but you can't get them everywhere. And when I use that brand and tell people about it, they can't find it. And then I'm getting phone calls. So I try to limit my phone calls by saying, use the red can, you'll be okay. It's also a low cost because they sell so much of this. So it's good. You don't need low expansive foam for ICFs. I think that's crazy. The door stuff does not work good. You just watch my foam videos. It doesn't work good at all. Use a good expansive foam and you'll be doing good. I like to put a bead of that between this wood and the plywood and it works great. So do that. I'm not gonna do it here because I got my really nice shirt on and you know how that works. So put a few screws in here and we're gonna actually build a whole buck here. And I'll let you know that when you're doing a video, things are never as good. They never, I should be finished already, but when you're on video, everything slows down. That's one side. You'll notice I'm sticking these out. You'll see why in a bit. Hopefully this is good content. It takes time to build these, but it's worthwhile if you're doing it right because it'll last and it, it'll, it'll be good with ICF, that's what you want. One thing with dimensional lumber is it warps, it twists, it cracks. This doesn't do that. So here I have another buck, half inch plywood. You can use thicker plywood, that's great. I'm using half inch plywood and watch this. I bought some half inch foam from the lumber yard and I just cut that with my knife and I just slide that in there. Now it's protected so that plywood's not gonna swell. I'm getting a little bit of insulation not much, but I'm getting a little bit of insulation. But more importantly, later on when I'm screwing, I can now put screws through here and I'm not gonna hit concrete. There's that foam behind there. It's gonna give me that, it's gonna give me a full inch 
before I hit concrete. And ideally, you'd have even more than that. But that's only in the center. I have a full two inches of anchorage on either side. So if I know that, it's going to be a lot easier to build with this. Okay, so here I just happen to have a buck started. And I'm going to finish it with this. In fact, let me tip this over. Again, I'm on video, so the joys of everything working good aren't with me. This is why I extended them further. You see that? You don't have to use a yellow drill either. That just happens to be what I have. No band-aids needed yet. Boy, these screws are not cooperating. Okay, I normally I'd put more screws in, but taking too much time to put this together. Now I slide this foam in. Actually, the other way. Well, that's not going to work. Got to slide this one in before you put it together. Lesson learned. Wood bucks. I haven't done this for so long. I'm learning stuff. That's good. So now, this will slide out in the wall, so I would put a screw into that just to hold it in place. So the good news is, is you can do better than I can on this. Now that I've shown you the example, and when you do a wood buck, you've got this plywood on the top, on the sides. This happens to be, I think, a 30 by 42 window. And on the bottom, you keep that open. So that, when you're placing concrete, you can come along and you can vibrate within the window. So that works out pretty good. That's a buck you can pre-build and then put into place as you go. So that's a solid buck. Gives you a little bit of insulation. Still using wood, but it'll work. This is all treated. Everything on this is treated. So it'll give you a really nice buck. It'll anchor itself in. You don't need additional anchors. It's a much better way to go though, and that is using our Fox Buck. And you know the cost is almost the same. We've had this now for oh, quite a few years, almost a decade. And it is being used on the majority of buildings that we sell. But there's times you can't get it or times where you just want to use a wood buck. That's a good way to do it. Now, you got to remember when you use Fox Buck, this is what I did, man, when we first got it, like a long time ago. This sample here is almost a decade old. But there's a wood buck, and this would represent concrete going in. And if I pull that apart, that's what the concrete looks like. So now you look at that. Anytime you do a blower door test, that air has to go around these one inch by one inch grooves. And that's why our Fox Buck works. It works really well. In fact, this is the only buck that meets the full Dade County approval because we brought this in, had it tested, they threw two by fours at it, they shot them out of a cannon. I think they had to hit it four or five times and then retest it for air infiltration, exfiltration and water penetration. And this buck passed all the tests and it's just a foam buck and it works great. Now, with this wood buck, you still need to brace on the inside. It's not gonna be strong enough to hold back concrete. Just like with the foam buck, you have to do it. Now with the fox buck, people complain it's a little bit more work. Yeah, it is. 
But look what you get out of it. You get a high performance wall. This is insulated all the way through and you can put stucco up against this. You can't do that with the wood buck. You'd have to detail that out to do that. So there's benefits on both sides. You choose what you want to use. I would use the buck, the foam buck. All ICF brands have this now. It is the way to go. It really is. So I hope that helps. Wood bucks, there's guys still doing them. I'm sure that's, that's good. Just do it right. See you in the next video. I think that that's good. good.